Okay, today we have a <clears throat> music hall MMF5, and I'm going to just be doing a basic evaluation and service on this. So what I do initially is, before I even get into um, messing around with the turntable, I download the service manual from Vinyl Engine. Now, I was able to download the owner's manual, which has some information in it in terms of basic maintenance but if there were any major issues with this I wouldn't have a schematic to follow or some kind of mechanical you know uh, diagram of what's going on so um, we're just gonna see kind of what's going on with this so um, we're gonna get this cover off right, it covers in pretty it's not in rough shape, but it is pretty scratched. So we're going to try to get some of these scratches out. <clears throat> and I'll show you the process that I use to do that. So this is my test record. It's an awesome, awesome record. I get these real cheap records just to test functionality out. I don't really listen to them. It's just, um, if I'm going to be listening to the same music over and over and over as I test turntables, I like to have some variety. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna turn this on. And what I also like to do is, I like to do a speed test. Now I have a strobe disc that I use, but I also like to use the phone app. Um, it's a RPM meter, right? So I pop that on there, I lock it. Right? And this has been pretty accurate. I've compared it to strobe discs and, um, you know, it's, it's close enough for, um, you know, making sure that the turntable is, is at least close to rated speed. You know, I don't know that I would trust the wow and flutter settings. This is supposed to have a 0.15% wow and flutter. I mean, it's almost dead on at 33.31 and it's 0 0.07 wow and flutter. So I'm going to call the speed good on this. Now we'll give it a test. Now I'm not going to play enough of this to get myself into trouble. I just want to kind of confirm that I'm getting sound out of both channels. Make sure. Oh, that's Dragon. They've got the tracking way off on this. Getting sound out of both channels, but I don't know if you could hear that, but this cartridge is, it's an Ortofon 2M Red, and that was dragging across the surface of the record. So again, great use of a test record, um, but I'm going to have to figure out uh, what they have this set at, because that's way too high. Okay, so... Um, have sound out of both channels, speed is good. Now I'm gonna go on to kind of a basic service. Um, I'm gonna remove the platter and set this off to the side. And then remove the belt and the inner pulley there. Belt's off to the side. So there's nothing, no real issues there. Get my trusty shop towel, my cotton swab, and some alcohol. Now, um, I love these bamboo cotton swabs. I get them from Amazon, I don't know, 500 for, I don't know, $15, something like that. But I'm going to use this to get down inside of, let me see if that has a... Looks like there's a bearing down in there. So if I were to flip this over, I don't know if that's a bearing or not. If I were to flip this over um, to do some work on the bottom, there is the potential that you lose that bearing that looks like it might be in there. It's a fixed. Huh, not sure. It feels like it's flat. But anyway, I'm going to 
use the cotton swabs until they come out clean. You can see that there's quite a bit of gunk in there. Um, so these cotton swabs, one fat end, kind of one um, shaped or formed or pointed end. I just use them both. Again, some rubbing alcohol. And I don't consider it done until they come out almost spotless. All right, so uh, still some gunk coming out there. I used to use Q-tips, but Q-tips leave some lint. And these are almost lint-free, so these work really, really well. Okay, so still some junk coming out of there, but not bad. I think I've got most of that. So I look down in there, it looks like there's some there's some debris and it looks like some debris kind of wedged into some of the, the corners. All right, we're gonna give it one more and see if that does it. Now according to the service manual, this motor is sealed and it has self-lubricating bearings. Okay, this is clean now. So I don't, I don't see any lubrication points on the motor. Um, it looks like the only lubrication point is for right this, this inner cam. So I'll just wipe it off with my shop towel. You see quite a bit of gunk coming off there. Get this until it's clean. Yeah, no bearing because that's that end is rounded. So yeah, so no bearing down there. there. Okay, so what I like to use <clears throat> the service manual or the owner's manual says to use some type of synthetic oil like Mobile One. Um, I have been using some stuff called Real Butter that I use for my fishing reels. It's synthetic. It has Teflon. Um, this has worked just uh, absolutely fine for all of the turntables that I've serviced. I do use, um, like, you know, depending upon the application, I use all-in-one or three-in-one three um, oil. I do have a dropper where I can put some other type of oil in here, motor oil. Um, but this real butter, I mean, I've had it forever. This has lasted forever. Um, so. I just use this so what I do you know and you'll see this in a lot of other videos maybe two or three drops down there and then just kind of coat right coat that shaft spread it around pop it down into position All right. give it a spin All right that's spinning super free right now. I mean, it wasn't bad before. It, it was spinning relatively freely before. So, but you can see that's gonna go on for a while. Um, this one really not bad. Gonna brush it off here a little bit. All right. Um, it looks like, oh yeah, okay. So this has a little leveling indicator here and it looked like, it didn't look like there was a bubble, but it's just a really big bubble. I don't know if you can see that. If I, if I move that back and forth, probably not, but it's got the little bubble in there. So that is good. So it looks like it might look out on this one. A lot of turntables I get and I evaluate. So this is for one of the shops that I, that I evaluate equipment for. And um, a lot of the turntables are just in horrible, horrible shape. Right, nicotine stained and not working and yeah, just uh, sometimes not fun to work on. I mean, to be honest with you. Okay, so all right, so can confirm that it's working. I'm gonna throw the belt back on onto the 33 spindle here, so. Or the 33 pulley. All right, so did this with one hand. <laughs> Normally I can't do that with one hand. 
put the platter on. Now I've kind of gunked up the platter with my fingerprints. So I don't want to leave that for the customer. So I'm going to grab my microfiber cloth. Okay, so grab my microfiber cloth. I've got to get rid of the fingerprints that I'm leaving all over the bottom of this. Clean off the top here in a minute. All right, a little bit better. Okay. So I may have a few little additional spots I need to clean off, but I think that's that's good for now. Okay. Call that good. All right, so now I want to look at the tracking weight and I want to check the the vertical alignment of the tone arm to make sure that doesn't need to be adjusted. I believe I'm just looking at this. I believe it can be adjusted on this one. Um, you don't see an adjustment screw on here. Uh, oh yeah, there is. Okay. I see it. It looks like there's an adjustment screw, a little Allen. Um, it looks like a little Allen screw back there that can be used to adjust the, the height of the tone arm. Hopefully this is okay, but we will soon find out. So before I do that though, uh, I'm going to get this tracking situation figured out because I don't want to put any additional kind of strain on the cartridge, the stylus, I'm having too much weight on it. So I use one of these little scales here. You've probably seen them in a hundred other videos works great use it all the time um, all right so let's see what this weight is set at man that feels really heavy okay it says full so this is this is way jacked and I'm going to remove the anti skate weight because that is going to cause a problem it's according to this it's it was set at two grams, but that's way off. Okay. So, and this is how it came to us from the customer that traded it in. 3.07. All right. So we're getting a little bit closer. 3.07. And I want to set it for 1.8. Man, that's going way back there. So I'm thinking, I am thinking there's a bit of a, whoops, a bit of a mismatch with uh, this particular cartridge and this tone arm because that's sliding way back there. 1.9. Should be pretty close to 1.8 right there. One point seven seven. I'm gonna check to see if that's smashing down on there. Um let me make sure. 1.7273, okay. Okay, so I've got tracking figured out. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to play the record um, amplified, but what I do want to do is just check out, check out the
the vertical and horizontal alignment of the tone arm and it looks really good um, and I'm no longer scraping it so let me I will actually turn on a little bit of sound make sure I got something it was happening whoops changed it to All right yep got good sound out of both channels not not scraping anymore I do want to check the alignment because I'm not sure how the person that owned this before, how they aligned the cartridge, if they just threw it on. Let me use one of my alignment protractors here and that's, oh man, that's almost perfect. It's almost perfect at the first point. And uh, the second one is, whoops, the second one is really close. Looked pretty bad from up top, but when I dropped it into that X, it's, it's almost, it's probably as good as it's going to get. So that's as good as I'm going to call it. Um, not sure I can get any closer on that. Okay, um, so let me put the cap back on here. And for some reason the cap's not going on. There we go. All right, cap is on. Now I do have to check the service manual for, I'm just pulling it up here on my computer. Okay, so <clears throat> I looked at the service manual or the owner's manual and I couldn't see what the anti-weight or anti-skate uh, weight settings are for this turntable, but I went to Vinyl Engine and I found a couple of different spots where it says, and here's how these are numbered. Um, they're numbered one, two, and three so it looks like one notch one is for, is for uh, tracking force of one to 1 1.4. Uh, the second notch is 1.5 to 1.9. So we're at 1.8. So I'm going to loop this around that second notch. And remember when I drop it off, that's where it's been. That's what it's been set to. All right. So <clears throat> I think... Uh, Mechanically, in terms of, uh, you know, an operational type status on this, I think this is good. Uh, what I normally do, though, is once I get uh, a turntable running, especially if it's an automatic or, or auto return turntable, I'll listen to a couple of records on it as I'm working on another project. Um, so I think I'm pretty comfortable with the basic service on this, setting it up. Uh, now on to the uh, cover. Okay, so on to the dust cover. Let's see if maybe, oh, that doesn't help. Okay, so now on to the dust cover. All right, so first thing I do when I'm looking at uh, repairing scratches on a dust cover is just the extent of the damage. These are, uh, there's some actually, there's some pretty good scratches in here. So this, I may, I don't think those are going to come out with with the buffer and the scratch removers that I use. Um, gosh, it looks like somebody has really gone to town on this. So first thing I'm going to do is just clean this off, re remove any kind of residue. I just use a, a glass cleaner um, to initially clean these off, right? So something like, I don't know, I think this is some Windex that I have sitting in the garage. Clean the inside so I can kind of see what's going on. Remove any film. And again, it doesn't appear that this person was around a lot of smoke because it doesn't have a film on it like some of the turntables I get. Where they're just nasty, right? You're removing sometimes 40, 50 years of nicotine 
come to you with a golden glow. <clears throat> okay. So again, this is, I mean, it's pretty clear. It's not great. This, this little emblem is all scratched and bent. <clears throat> okay, so I think I've removed any gunk residue off of the cover. Uh, depending upon what I'm doing now, I, I'm going to try to use just some of these scratch removers. I don't think that they're probably going to be very effective on some of these scratches, but we'll see how it turns out afterwards. Um, I may have to use, I may have to wet sand, but typically on dust covers, uh, I'm not going for perfect, right? I don't really do restorations. I do repairs and then you know I try to make it as cost effective for the customer whoever that customer might be in this case it's one of the shops so I do want to get this clear but I don't know how much work uh, I want to go into in terms of removing these scratches so I'm gonna first try the Novus heavy scratch remover on this and I haven't used this for a while so I may have to just open that up and put some on a cloth so don't I don't go crazy with it I just use a little bit a couple of spots if I'm not careful I end up getting this flying all over my equipment here on the bench so right and I just use a kind of a car wax buffer orbital buffer to do this and I do a couple of different motions, so I'm going to go kind of across, right, and then I'll go up and back, and then I'll go across again and up and back, and I'll just forge you through that as I work on it. Okay, so kind of the first layer of scratches have been removed. Um, it did a pretty good job. I mean, not, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but again, um, you know, how far do you go into a, a turntable cover for someone who, who's going to sell it, right? Um, if this were kind of a, a, a restoration for a customer or a repair or a high-end turntable, I would take a little bit more time. But for one like this, I mean, it's kind of a deal where the shop isn't super concerned. Um, they just want it to be pretty clear. So now that was the Novus Heavy Scratch Remover. I, I kind of work in stages. I'll go to the fine scratch remover and then I'll use scratch X at the end and then we'll kind of see what it looks like. I think we're going to be okay, but so this is the fine scratch remover. Much better. That looks a lot better. It's getting pretty, pretty, pretty clean, pretty clear on top. 
Okay, so what I what I do for the last pass, let me clean this off. What I do for the last pass is scratch X. Um, I found that scratch X kind of works the best. If I'm just going to kind of buff out a turntable cover um, without worrying about trying to remove some of those deeper scratches, I'll use scratch X and it seems to work really, really well. So put some scratch X on here. Well, that wasn't good. Just plastered my oscilloscope. That's why I usually have a cart that I do this on when I'm not trying to film it. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Okay. Okay, so let's wipe this off. I think I should have let the glass cleaner dry a little bit because it seems like that scratch X congealed with it or something interesting Okay, so I'll have to look at the video and do a side-by-side -side comparison, but I think those, I think it looks a lot clearer. Again, there are still some deeper scratches, but this is not one that I would consider a candidate for you know, a hardcore sanding, getting rid of all the scratches. Looks like there may have been some gunk on the inside of this as well. Yeah, there's some stuff on here. Okay, much better, much, much, much better. Not sure if the camera is picking them up, but there are some scratches here still. Let me get this out of the way. Scratches here on some deeper scratches, but that is much cleaner than it was, much clearer than it was.
Okay, so here is the finished product, at least as far as I'm going to take it. Now, under my <clears throat> kind of harsh workbench light here, if I open the lid slowly, you can kind of see some of the scratches. They're still in there. There's still some swirls in there, but again, without, you know, sanding this down uh, and getting crazy with it, this is probably as good as it needs to be for um, the shop that I'm that I'm going to deliver this to. Now, again, this is under really harsh lighting. I'm going to turn this light off and kind of show you what it looks like under more natural light. So this is more what it would look like in the shop, right? I do have a little bit of a glare here from my light above my head, but right, you can kind of see it's. I mean, it's pretty clean, right? In normal room lighting, it's a it's a pretty clean lid. So. So anyway, uh, that wraps it up for this video. Um, as always, if you like what you see, hit subscribe, hit like, um, and uh, I'll see you next time.